What's going on everyone? Welcome back to T3G. My name is Dalibor, this is App Spotlight, and today we're talking about image viewers. Coming up. All right, now if you don't know what an image viewer is, that's basically an application that allows you to open images without actually opening them fully in like a Photoshop or another editing software. Adobe has something like this built in, it's called Adobe Bridge, and that's where you can just browse everything, browse all your folders, all your drives, and that's how you get to all your images. Basically, you kind of see a preview of it in larger format than you normally can in Windows. It's a little more useful. For Adobe, it's all kind of built in, so you can open directly into Photoshop, directly into, into InDesign or Illustrator, or whatever. But if you just wanted that kind of functionality and have a little bit more of a comfortable comprehensive viewer than just file explorer there are a few options the first thing we're going to be talking about is fast stone Fa fast fast stone image viewer <laughs> I, who names this stuff? Who knows? Uh, this is my this is my wallpaper folder. I, I download a bunch of stuff off DeviantArt, uh, and pretty straightforward here. It's just gonna go through your go through your pictures. You're gonna see all of them in little thumbnails. And again, you could see this in Explorer. But little things like in here, I can go in and take a look at specific details. So if you do have, let's say, if you are working on photos, if you are working on photo editing, if you took a thousand photos and you want to kind of cut through the, the, the fat real quick, you can go through something like this and check if it's in focus or something like that. You know, if you took three or four of the same photo, the same kind of frame, you could take a look, make sure it's in focus, make sure you got the right stuff engaged and, and, and set up. Of course, you've got a little bit of tools here, some things that you can check out, cropping, like easy cropping, things like that. Um, adjusting lighting like basic basic adjustments really I feel like this is more so for actually editing and organizing where the photos are which photos are organized like what folders things like that uh, you've got of course your full screen view you've got a couple different views your browser view uh, I like this if you're gonna go full screen if you're gonna edit uh, but if you're just looking through your stuff, this is kind of this is a I think a pretty solid view overall now This is obviously has options of images videos or images and videos. I only have images in this folder it's, That's what I use for my wallpapers uh, Looks like I got two of these so let's delete that and see this is the kind of stuff where you can go through and See all your stuff with something like this. It, it just feels a little easier to 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 deal with than in just Explorer. File Explorer is not the the most intuitive thing for specifically image browsing. You can do it. You have thumbnail view options, but with something like this, for instance, it's showing me the actual resolution size. So if I took maybe if I saved two different versions of something and it's the same file name or they're right next to each other, I, you know, in, in in Explorer, I'd have to go into a completely different view. I'd have to show information. I'd have to maybe even open the photo to see the resolution difference whereas here it's right there So this is actually pretty useful. I like that although for whatever reason it took forever to delete that so that was interesting but that's uh but yeah overall i think this is this is a pretty solid viewer we've got a few different options again zooming comparing images that's cool so let's see let's let's pick these two compare that's probably going to show yep side by side and that's dope again if you took multiple photos of something you can compare them and see see the difference that's dope i dig that so that's the first one we're looking at and we'll see i might i might hold on to this one um just for organizational purposes every once in a while i go and i just spend a whole night organizing photos or organizing comics and so that's the kind of stuff i, I end up geeking out over uh, now this one is xn view for i have not, have never used either of these before they each kind of have their own own different appeals uh, similar view again you have your preview you have your file tree and you have your thumbnail view but in this one you also do get some additional information on the side here so for instance you get the actual file name you get the resolution and such so you don't see that stuff up here you do see certain things so you see uh, what looks like the color formats and there's a couple different things there's some color coding as well so depending on what's going on yeah that's interesting so maybe uh, that's clearly a PNG so maybe PNGs are transparent yeah yeah PNGs are done a certain way see that's that's interesting stuff to me that's very interesting stuff so this is again another additional cool tool that you can have if you are doing you know design this could come in very handy if you have a collection of stock images that you've created or just you know assets you know little things like arrows and 
you know, icons and things like that that will end up being in multiple designs. If you have things like that, this kind of viewer could definitely come in handy where you could be like, oh, look, look at all these photos, boom, boom, this is the one that's actually transparent. This is the one I can actually use in whatever I'm doing. So that's cool, I dig that. You also have a lot of information on the side here that has a lot of the file information. Uh, so obviously you have the pixel size, but it also has a print size. Now that is super cool. Again, if you're working in design, if you're working in print, this can be extremely, extremely useful. Dang, I might actually end up keeping both of these for different purposes, you know, like target them at specific folders so when I open, I know what I'm, uh, I know what I'm getting into. That's, that's very cool. Yeah, I dig that because that's, that's super useful, especially if you're doing print stuff. If you are, if you have a, you know, eight by 10 in mind and your, your image that you're trying to use and it's supposed to be a full, full page image and it will only print at let's say six by eight, then you're, you're stretching and you, you know ahead of time before you even put it in Photoshop, before you even bring it into Illustrator, you know that it's not going to look good because you're going to be stretching it. You're going to be forcing artifacting. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I dig that. I really do. Um, another cool feature, histogram. Again, if you're into photography, if you're into color correction, this kind of thing, man, this, this will, this will definitely be useful. Now the categories is more so for organizational purposes. So if you want to actually create folders and specific categories, you say, all right, cool. For instance, let's call this guy uh, animal because, uh, Freakazoid is an animal. So then when you go through, you'll see actually it's got a little little tag on it right there. You go into your, uh, what's it called? Just, just categories. You go into your category views, we named it an animal, so we click animals and now it's only gonna show that image. So that's super useful for organizational purposes. I do not go that deep into it with my photos, uh, but that's, that's just me. And then of course, just like the other one, which I've already fast known, <laughs> I completely forgot the name of it already. Uh, if you open it fully, you have some editing options, you have some basic, basic tools, cropping, rotating, things like that. Again, I think this is kind of the early work you can do, especially if you have maybe like, if you have a two stage team, right? You have yourself, you have an assistant, you can be like, hey, here are the photos or here are the images that I've created or taken or whatever. And then all they have to do is rotate them or crop down any excess whatever around. You know, if you took a green screen photo, well, you got to crop off anything that's beyond the green screen. Otherwise, you're going to see it in the photo, right? So regardless, you have to get that crop down. So that's the kind of stuff that could be could be just useful in a in a in a you know multi-person workflow for sure or even just like you know you take the photos you sit down at night and you're like all right cool let me just bust out the basic corrections cropping reorganizing ro cropping rotating things like that and then the next day you can go into color correction even there you do actually have some you know i could hit automatic levels get a little different different contrast but i wouldn't do that because i would never i would never presume to adjust the coloring of a, a piece by the chamba because that man is the g I love his stuff. Now, finally, we are gonna talk about one more piece that I've actually used for a long time, but it's much more of a kind of background utility. And it's, if I can't open a photo, that's the application I go with. And it's called Irfan View. I think Irfan View is the correct one, right? So again, if you open a photo in it, pretty straightforward, it's just a viewer. Uh, you don't even have really editing options, but, what you will have is, I came up against this several years ago, and this is where I ended up finding this application, uh, WebP. If you've ever saved a photo from the internet and it saves as a WebP, as opposed to a JPEG or a PNG or whatever, you know, an actual like understandable uh, image format, you go to double click it, and clearly it's got a little preview. It knows what it is, right? But it's, it wants to open it in a browser, and I don't wanna open it in a browser, right? That's not, that's not what I'm looking for. So what you can do instead is right click, open with, or you can drag and drop, and you choose Irfan View. Boom, opened up. Now there is one little caveat to that. You do need to download the plugins and they're just on the Irfan, Irfan View website. There's got a, they've got a full uh, plugins installer. They have all the plugins necessary. And I think that will pretty much cover every single type. Let's see, uh, oh boy, yeah, look at, Look, look at all these formats, everything, I, things I've never even heard of. So yeah, you could open just about everything in this application and won't have to worry about it. And then from here you can save as, and then you could change the format. And that, that is super useful. As I mentioned, I've had that with me for years. I keep it in the background. If I ever come up against an, a piece of art that needs to actually be opened up a certain way that does not work in other applications, Airfond View always comes to the rescue. Let's actually go ahead and just save this piece because uh, I haven't seen it in a long time. Reverse flash concept. I would have liked that costume better than the one they ended up with on the show anyway. That would have that been way better my opinion. If you disagree, uh, fight me in the comments. <laughs> 
So that's gonna be it for this one. Just looking at a couple different image viewer programs. Uh, if you have any other programs that you think I should check out and any other image viewers, make sure you drop that in the comments. I'll definitely make sure to check those out because as you've seen here, sometimes you just find cool tools that you might end up using that can come in handy with specific stuff. So I dig this. I dig both of these. And uh, like I said, our fun view has been around for years for me. So that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Make sure you hit me with a comment let me know why and uh we'll definitely be back friday i know we didn't get the tech video out but that was just a matter of actually let's let's do a quick update i don't know if you guys follow us on instagram uh this tablet this iview i think i said i win uh this iview tablet was going to be uh the review on monday it has watch this watch this i just turned it on let's see boom 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 incredible boot time incredible boot time so like i've got some really nice things to say about it but it's been charging for literal days and I'm pretty sure it's still at like 50 something percent. So I don't know why that is coming. Yeah, it's at 52%. It has incredible battery life. While it's plugged in, it does not discharge. So it works on charger, but that defeats the whole purpose. So we'll, we'll maybe talk about that. I don't know. I might need to contact them and see what's going on, but I'm rambling. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.